everybody, it's Allison Haikila. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm excited for today's video because I am part of a little mini hop with my friend Amy from Amy's Wares and Lauren Z from Queen Lore Creations. We decided that we wanted to get together and make a card using the same stencil on a gel press plate, but in three different ways. So I opted to work with alcohol inks and we're using that stained glass stencil from A Colorful Life Designs, which is just a beautiful six by nine stencil. And I've got Mojito, Laguna, and Gumball alcohol inks from Ranger. And I am applying it to, I will be applying it to my eight by 10 gel press plate. So you can see right now that I'm using my little Tim Holtz brayer to brayer the stencil in place. You can see how the color changed, got darker as I brayered on top of it. That's just getting it to stick better to the gel press plate. I have it going sideways um, because I anticipate that I'm going to wind up using the excess ink on the other side. And also, I don't want to use a whole piece of paper when I can just use part of it. I don't know. I'm just doing it my way. So I added the Laguna and the Mojito to the stenciled area and I'm braring it out a little bit. And now I'm going in with the gumball and adding that in just a few little spots. So I'm gonna pull up that stencil and look at all of that glorious color on there. We're gonna save that. We're gonna use that in a couple of minutes. So now I put my hands up just to show you that we have to wait for the alcohol ink to dry. It doesn't take long at all. And I'm spreading out some heavy body white acrylic paint, just a little bit. You don't want to use too much. And now I'm using a six inch brayer from Speedball to move that paint around. You don't want to rub it too hard because you don't want to pull up the alcohol ink that you just used. Uh, you just want to get a nice thin coat of heavy body paint to pull up that alcohol ink. So now I'm gonna peel this away. And you can see that I have all that extra white space on the side there, which is perfect for another print. Look at how pretty that is. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that stencil and we're gonna A, clean it off, but also B, not waste any of that glorious alcohol ink that's on there. So I'm spraying the stencil with isopropyl alcohol. It's, I believe, a 91%. You wanna make sure you have at least 91% when you do this. Now I have a new piece of paper I'm just using copy paper. This is a nice, uh, heavy, bright white copy paper. It's a 28 pound, it's from Navigator. I have the link for it in my description box. I just like to use a nicer copy paper when I'm doing my gel press prints. So there you go. Look at how pretty that is. There's still ink on there, but that's okay. We're gonna wind up doing another print with the alcohol inks and the paint. So we're gonna just utilize all of that color. I'm braring it down again so that it sticks so that the alcohol ink doesn't seep underneath the stencil. If it does a little bit, that's okay, but we wanna try and maintain the integrity of the, the stencil look itself, right? So now I'm braring it out, and you can see that I'm not going crazy rolling back and forth. I'm just kind of doing it in little kind of pockets because I don't wanna mix the colors too much, right? I wanna have you know, at least those three colors and maybe a couple of blends in there too. So once again, we have to let that dry. And now I'm going back in with this heavy body white acrylic and I'm kind of applying just a little bit, but kind of all over. So this way it's a little easier for my brayer to catch that paint and spread it out as opposed to it just being one glob in one spot. And then I have to work really hard to move it around. And then I accidentally pick up some of that alcohol ink and it doesn't transfer in my paper because now it's on my brayer. So we're rubbing that down and now, oh, look at those colors. How pretty is that? I love it. And you can see that there's a little bit of ink left from the transfer from before when we used the isopropyl, which is very cool. So now we're gonna get a secondary print again. And I'm gonna spray this with the isopropyl. You could use blending solution too if you want to, but isopropyl is cheaper. Um, it does have a different effect. It lightens the colors a bit as opposed to just blending the colors, but I don't mind. It looks, it looks good to me. And then we can make, you know, a whole bunch of cards with these pieces. You can cut them down. You don't have to use the whole piece. You can cut them down into little strips and what have you. Um, they'll just look, they'll look really nice however you use them. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Reminds me of like cobblestones, but like really colorful cobblestones. So here are all of the prints that I made cut down. So pretty. I love how they all came out. Those are going to be fun. And this is just rolled off from the little brayer with isopropyl. I sprayed it with isopropyl alcohol and then rolled it onto paper and that was that. 
So I chose that first print that I shared and I'm cutting it in half. I just have a line there just so that I don't have to remeasure it and trying to decide which piece I'm gonna use and we're going with that one. So now I have the teeny honeycomb from A Colorful Life Designs and I'm using Bunny Nose Glitter Glaze from Brutus Monroe. This color isn't available anymore. They seem to change out their colors quite a bit, um, but you can probably find something similar. It's just a, a really bright, happy pink glitter glaze. So take a look around, see what you could find. You know, I, I chose the pink because it works really well with the gumball alcohol ink that I have. And I'm just using it sporadically. What's nice about geometric shapes like this is that you can easily line them up. You can see that this is a little stencil. It's a three by five. And you can just line it up so that you don't have a, a pattern that doesn't work. You can just realign everything, which is great. So I'm just scraping through a little bit here and there making sure that I have enough coverage. I think that looks pretty cool. And now we have to let it dry. And that's the hard part, right? Letting this stuff dry. On the gel plate, things dry pretty quickly, but I had to set this aside for a while. And now I'm coming in with Lucky Clover Distress Ink. And I'm gonna use that same teeny honeycomb. You're gonna see that I get a little unsure of what I'm doing here. Um, at this point, this is, Pretty straightforward. I'm just using my cottontail blending brush to ink the edges up. And again, because we're using that geometric, it's really easy to realign that pattern and just make sure that it's all nice and perfect. So I'm going around. I, I chose Lucky Clover because A, it's a color I don't use very often, and B, it worked really well with this mono print that we made on our gel plate. I thought that it really enhanced the bits of green that are in the print. So wanted to go with that. I, I figured we already had enough blue and we already had enough pink, especially because of that glitter glaze. So I wanted to bring out some of that green, but I'm not liking that. It's just too busy. So now I'm just taking the residual ink that's on that brush and I'm just blending right over it. Not really trying to get rid of the honeycomb, but trying to soften it a bit because now we're kind of getting rid of all of that excess white space. And that's okay, but I'm still just unsure. You can tell that when I, when I leave things sitting there for a while, <laughs> that I'm just not real happy. I grabbed my water and I'm just kind of splattering it a little bit, just to try to break up the pattern. I love honeycombs. If you've watched my videos before, you know that I really love using honeycomb patterns, but for some reason it was just too much with that mono print. It was too busy and I wasn't really sure what to do to fix it. So I'm splattering it a little bit. I'm picking up the excess with a paper towel and that's helping, but not too much. So what, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna just keep spraying it over and over and over again and picking up the color. And yeah, it's not working for me. So I'm gonna just wait. <laughs> I'm gonna just leave it to the side and see what I'm gonna do. I have to think about, about it a little bit. I'm using one of my most used dyes. This is the Painted Hello from Simon Says Stamp. I have this and all of the other supplies that I use linked below in my description box, as well as Amy and Lauren's videos as well. And they'll be linked at the end of this video too. So I'm using two different foiled cardstocks. One is purple and the other one is holographic. And I'm just layering them up. Look at how pretty that is. You could see honeycomb patterns on my fingers. It's pretty funny. So now I'm going to apply that mono print to my card base. And I'm thinking that I'm just gonna leave things as they are, right? I'm not, because I'm still not happy with how that honeycomb looks in the background. It's just still bothering me. But, you know, I'm, I'm plugging along, I'm adding that hello, and I love how that looks. I think that that, that was just what it needed, but I'm, I'm still thinking that I need to add something else. So I take out the Sheer Shimmer Spritz in Frost and I'm spraying it onto my craft mat on the side and I'm using a paintbrush to apply that color, well, lack thereof color, that frost to the edge of the card. So as I'm sure you know, Distress inks are water reactive and the Sheer Shimmer spritzes are water based and they have a fabulous shimmer and the frost is so pretty. So what I'm trying to do is just add some shine, but also mute down that pattern just a bit more, just so that it's not quite so intense and takes away from that monoprint that we did. And in the end, 
I'm pretty happy with it. Perhaps I should have gone with like cracked pistachio distress ink as opposed to Lucky Clover, but I don't know, I just really wanted to use Lucky Clover. I'm happy with how the card turned out, don't get me wrong. But I was struggling a little bit with that green. So now I'm adding some Starburst rhinestones. Um, these were from Doodles Paper Playground and I tried to find a place that carries something similar and I couldn't, so my apologies. But if you happen to have had the Starburst rhinestones from Doodles Paper Playground, you can use them on something like this and they look fabulous. I'm using my pokey tool and my jewel picker to apply them and my finger a little bit, you know, because why not? Um, and I'm trying to just get all of the colors that are in that mix onto the card because they all work really well with it. And now I'm gonna take my on point glue, which is my favorite glue to use when I'm attaching sequins or rhinestones. And now I'm realizing my tools are in the wrong hand, so I have to flip them around. And I'm just going to pick them up with the jewel picker, apply some glue, and then stick them back down with the pokey tool. And that makes quick, easy work of the whole process because sometimes it can be pretty tedious. And then I like to tap the glue down to uh, get any excess out of the nozzle. And that's the card, folks. I hope that you check out Amy and Lauren's videos because they are also using the stained glass stencil. And then, you know, on the gel press plate with some additional um, mediums. They're not using alcohol ink, they're using other stuff. So that's it for me. I'm going to have their links in the end screen coming up. And I hope that you have a great day. Be well, stay safe, peace out everybody.